Um, all right, well, thanks for joining me. Why don't we start with you just telling me who you are and what you're, what you're doing. My name is Fred Carger. I've just set up the Fred Carger Presidential Exploratory Committee. I'm seriously considering running for president as an independent Republican in 2012. So why are you running for president? Well, I've been a frustrated candidate my whole life. Um, I've always been gay, but I was never really out of the closet publicly, which I just did four years ago. Um, I feel that there's a need to have a, a gay candidate run for president. Uh, it's never happened before. Um, I would like to be the first person to do it if I decide to run. And I feel that um, for three important areas. One, the LGBT community, I think, needs good, strong representation, a good voice to talk about um, five particular issues um, that, that are not happening right now that need to happen. I, I feel um, the country is in need of uh, a good shot in the arm in leadership. I feel that the, the current president is not doing the job of really lifting the spirit of Americans. Um, I think that that is something I could do. Uh, and also, thirdly, I think the Republican Party is on uh, its way to extinction unless we open up the flaps of the tent and allow a lot more people in and work to get younger people engaged in the party. Are uh, you a feminist? I am a very strong feminist. Uh, my mother was, uh, and I, I better be. Um, I've always been very, very pro-choice. I've been a founding member of a group called Republican Majority for Choice. Um, based in Washington, which is the Republican side of the whole argument. I've been a big supporter of Planned Parenthood, um, and obviously the Equal Rights Amendment, which was around when I was just starting in politics, and a uh, uh, big Hillary Clinton supporter last time around. So your policies make you sound more like a Democrat. Why are you running as a Republican? Well, you know, the Republican Party uh, that I grew up in uh, was very moderate, very progressive. Uh, some of the early Republican leaders were, you know, much more liberal, um, you know, much more... Um, Democrats were the segregationists at the turn of the last century, and uh, the Republican Party really led the way there. And, and it's it's gotten taken over, it's gotten hijacked by the, the Christian right. And, um, and of course, George W. Bush really helped that along and took the party on a big rightward course. Well, I think that's I think that's a, a way to extinction. So I want to be there to to talk about the, the moderating the party. Uh, the party of Nelson Rockefeller and Charles Percy, my mentor, I think it's important. I think it's important that um, the gay community be represented in the Republican Party because, you know, the powers change in this country, so I think we should have a seat at the table. And I think it's very appropriate that, um, that the first uh, potential gay candidate for president be a Republican. Are there any issues with which you agree with the, the Republican Party as it stands? Well, the, the hypocrisy of the Republican Party is is, uh, is pretty prevalent these days. You know, they, they preach small government, yet, you know, they try and tell a woman what she can do uh, with her body. So, I mean, I'm more of a fiscal conservative. I come from a finance background. Um, that's kind of my interest. Um, I, I definitely want to work, um, you know, to, to strengthen our economy. I believe in the private sector. Um, I, I'm, I'm a libertarian of sorts, but not, you know, as far as uh, government and defense and, and social security and so many parts of government can do very well. What do you think about Sarah Palin calling herself a feminist? Um, maybe Sarah Palin doesn't quite know what a feminist is. Uh, she's, um, she's, you know, she, she's going to be an interesting participant in the process. Um, I don't know if she's going to be in the Tea Party or the Republican Party, um, but I would certainly welcome her into the Republican um, presidential race if, if I'm in it. I think it would really add a lot of excitement. Um, she's a rock star. Um, you know, I think she has things to bring to the table and certainly, you know, issues to discuss. But uh, as far as a feminist, her definition and mine, are, I guess, are about 180 degrees apart. Um, so you think you'll see marriage equality in your lifetime? Marriage equality is, is a certainty. It's a question of when. Um, I mean, when I, when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s and realizing my, you know, my sexual orientation, I mean, the word gay wasn't even in the vocabulary. So the fact that so much has happened just in my lifetime and particularly in the last 10 years, um, all over the country, the hearts and minds of Americans are, are changing so rapidly. Every day something good happens um, that marriage equality is around the corner. I mean, the, you know, the best, most logical way um, is through this, uh, the Prop 8, the Perry case, um, through the Supreme Court. I mean, they did the right thing in 1967 um, when 
interracial marriage came before them, uh, the Loving versus Virginia case, which was not a politically popular decision at the time. Uh, and this gay marriage case, when that comes up, might not be a politically popular decision, but that's why we have three branches of government. And that's why the courts are there, to protect minorities. So I'm very hopeful they'll do the right thing if and when it comes before them, but I'm also very optimistic that the way the public tide is moving so quickly that in, in state legislatures like we've seen, and also when it comes to public votes, that we will win. And eventually, marriage equality will be the law of the land for all Americans. All right. Thank you very much.